The following podcast is a next level production. Yeah, Jennifer, darling, I'm going to need you to sit in the calming chair right now. <gasps> right now. You um, drop. Fine. As soon as I'm out of there, I'm going to rip this guy to shreds. Oh, okay, hold on. That is not how we work through our issues around here. Well, she is welcome to the circle. Okay. But she's got to get her own chair. Okay. I'd love to work through our issues if, if you'll let me. Hey, panelists. Welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoilerful podcast about She-Hulk Attorney at Law Season 1, Episodes 7 and 8. So we're trying to combine it to keep up. Last episode of Panels to Pixels you got, we gave you three episodes of She-Hulk. So <laughs> yeah. now we're rounding it out so that way we get to our uh, finale episode, to Episode 9. Uh, once that happens, then, you know, we are, Done. you know, we're done with uh, the She-Hulk. <laughs> She-Hulk, at, yep. And then uh, maybe for Halloween, we'll actually put out the Werewolf by Night review that just yeah. dropped on Disney Plus, which uh, I did enjoy. But there, there's some cool things that are in it that I would like to talk about. So that'll be set for Halloween. Uh, and then we might have a break time. I don't know. But we yeah. will we'll, we'll definitely be getting caught up with Umbrella Academy as well. We might double up on a couple of episodes when we do that. And... Uh, Right now, well, let's move right along and go right into She-Hulk Attorney at Law Season 1, Episode 7, The Retreat. (laughs) (laughs) So this one, this one was interesting. The the synopsis is very, very brief. It's just simply Jin visits Blonsky's wellness retreat, meets new friends, and gets in touch with her inner She-Hulk. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Literally what a retreat normally is. Which is fine by me. Uh, to me, my first impression, honestly, uh, the, I, it was entertaining. To me, it was more of like a filler episode. And, you know, it gave some light to Jen and her issues that were going on within this past season or the past few episodes, relationship-wise. Uh, I like the fact that we got a little bit more Emma Blonsky and... We get to see the softer side of Amel. We actually get to see him, and you could tell he has been rehabilitated. I really mm-hmm. enjoyed that aspect. And then you see the kooky wackiness of the people that he's got there for his retreat. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah. yeah, Jen's outcome. So that that was my overall feeling about it. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was okay. It wasn't like I said before about some of these. It wasn't. It wasn't necessarily my favorite, but yeah. uh, it was. It was okay. It, uh, you know, it had some funny moments in it, like you know, her trying to stand in the uh, inside the building, the whichever room they were in, where she had to stoop her head under the the ceiling. You know, was <laughs> kind of kind of funny. But uh, and you know, we we did get the we get to see what Josh's true motives are, and we'll talk about that. I'm sure. But, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, it was just, it was okay. Yeah, it was okay. I'm not not saying I hated it. I'm just saying I wasn't, yeah. Yeah, It's like, this could have been something written off really quick in a Mm -hmm. flashback. But, you know, they. I guess they were trying to write it out to, uh, like, work on the actual character of Jennifer Walters. Well, yeah, and they are, I mean, they are setting up her rage a little bit that we're going to see in the next episode because they really haven't, we haven't really seen that since the first episode. Yep. Um, and so that's, that, that looks kind of one of my points, I think, also. So we have already started <laughs> getting into into that, but that's, yeah. you know, they, they're kind of foreshadowing that she's got some anger, that she does have some anger issues, at least when it comes to Josh and uh, uh, this kind of thing. But uh, uh, yeah, it, it. That's that's the only thing I can I can give the benefit of this episode is that if we didn't really have this episode, then mm. the end of the next episode would be harder to take. Yes, you know because she was so adamant in the first episode about how she can control her anger because she has to control her anger all the time. You know, yeah, as a woman, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, I again, I, I, I'm <laughs> I'm I'm starting to come up a little bit on this episode. I mean, I, I didn't hate it. Obviously, it was it was good. It was, yeah. But, uh, but yeah. Um, let's move right into our highlights then, I guess. 
Sure. Um, I loved I, I loved the montage of dates at the beginning. I thought it was really I thought it was really, with Josh, really yeah. cute. Yeah, with Josh. <laughs> it felt like more than three dates to me. Later in the episode, she says it was only three dates and then yeah. they slept together. But it really the montage made it seem like it was like, more like two weeks worth. <laughs> yeah, it really seemed like there was a they were they did a lot of stuff in those three dates, you know. But uh, uh you know, I had to I kind of forgot a little bit about until the second watch of, of how, what he did, you know, cause he, he ghosts her. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we get to see in those last few minutes of the episode, we get to see what actually took place. And we see that he takes a picture, he clones her phone. He takes a picture of her laying in the bed mm -hmm. and, and then he texted someone and the emojis made it seem like he had her blood. And so ah. I don't know how, cause it was like a syringe with, that was red and then it had a, a vial that was green and then it was like a thumbs up or a happy face i can't remember what the the last one was so it it, it to me it seemed to indicate that maybe he got her blood like they've been trying to do but mm. um she must be a really heavy sleeper in her gin form then if he was able to poke her with a needle and draw out blood uh, uh, enough for a vial full you know or however much he he took without her even mm. waking up it, that seems a little or he could have drugged her to get the blood, you know. I hadn't because thought of that. Sleeping, you yeah, know? That, that was my he, thought. Yeah, he might have. He might have, but she didn't indicate she felt like she had been. But I mean, maybe we'll get some more. You know, we didn't get anything of Josh in the next in episode eight, unless he's one of the three masked guys. You yeah, know, that we that that showed up at the end, but we won't know that until the probably so, the finale. Yeah, the finale will definitely be. We didn't get a reveal of any of them, you know. Mm -hmm. Like like I said, I think it's also Todd in that group. So we know yeah. Josh is definitely part of that and for the Hulk underscore king mm -hmm. of what they're doing for intelligentsia. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't catch and the I whole thing I about the cell know, phone. I thought that was I thought that Hulk underscore king was like a F thing, not a like a oh really that's that's what i that's what i took of it the sec in the second watch i'm with you on the first watch i kind of thought it was somebody saying they're the hulk king but then i was like oh wait they're showing her them having sex and then with the 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 hashtag or whatever hulk hulking uh oh. so i think i think it was more of a play off of uh the sex and, and the f word hmm, kind of thing. Interesting. I, I maybe i could be i could be reading more into that than there is but uh yeah, that's what it seemed like to me. Yeah, with like you, with like you though, I I really did enjoy that whole montage. Mm -hmm. I didn't catch. I I thought the same thing. It's like it felt like they're going out for a few weeks, more than three dates. Yeah, but yeah, the obsessing though of of over him because she's so smitten after she slept with him, and you know she talks about it with Nikki. Nikki saying, "Hey, you're going over that intelligentsia stuff because she was so enamored with everything and texting right. and." And she goes, no. And it's like, oh, because then, you know, she was distracted from her work. Mm -hmm. But to me, it was uh, it was a nice long setup, honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, with the montage, it just reminded me of a, a movie that's on Peacock with, uh, with Pete Davidson and Kelly Cuoco called Meet Cute. Because <laughs> that oh, okay. was literally, that's the whole thing. But with that, it's like they're literally having the same date over and over again. In that oh, particular okay. movie, you gotta watch it. It's like a uh, a Groundhog's Day, but more of time travel with her and Pete Davidson, and it, it's kind of it's cute, but it, it's like because it's the same date over and over again. But they kind of did the same thing, similar things that you get out of this particular episode tonight. That's what reminded me of it. Mm. But the uh, yeah, that I, I enjoyed that whole montage. Uh, I, then we had it kind of segues into uh, Jen getting the phone call from Emil's parole officer, mm -hmm. and apparently his in inhibitor plant implant is offline, so she has to go there because they're fearing that he's going to change into the abomination. So they have to go to his summer twilight retreat. <laughs> I love that <laughs> summer twilight. <laughs> so I I enjoyed that aspect of her showing up. 
the fact that the parole officer he goes, yeah, I can't get enough guys to come out. I'm just, a, he's basically afraid that FML's there. He's like, I need a Hulk. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's afraid that if he's turned to the abomination and she's like, yeah, and if he's broke parole, he probably should have his lawyer there. Yeah. You know, which I thought, I thought was, was pretty interesting too. So. Yeah. And it looked like Emma was very laid back. Very understanding. It, it just the fact that he loved his chicken so much that he got himself electrocuted must have did yeah. something to the anklet, right? <laughs> yeah, I thought that was I thought that was great that, that that it just ends up being a nothing and the the parole officer just bounces as soon as as soon as he's done he's out of there. Like yeah, he doesn't want to have anything to do yeah. with the guy. <laughs> it's just like, the ankle monitor and he's like, okay, stay away from electric fences, bam, and he's gone. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, but as he's as he's gone, then Jen has to encounter all these guys that. Uh, Emil is dealing with and they're just like to me it was more of like aggressive play fighting to get out their angers anger yeah. issues what Emil yeah, was but they messed up her car yeah was, they messed yeah. up but yeah uh what was it man bowl or whatever man bowl and uh i've got the names here hold somewhere aguila uh, yeah or uh el, el aguilar el, el, el aguilar Aguila. yeah yeah, yeah. Poor, uh, uh, so we got man bowl apparently he was a lab experiment gone wrong <laughs> yeah yeah, and El Aguilar is like he's still he looks like a matador, but he's not. I'm a swashbuckler. <laughs> he's a swashbuckler. He's got the sword, but they kill her uh, Prius, uh, yeah. and then she's got to wait, so she has to stay there a bit all day, so she gets to see. So she she's still trying to find a self service so she can get in touch. She's obsessing over Josh mm -hmm. and thinking that he'll message back, but then she falls into the their little group huddle where they they have they just you know it's a, a meeting like mm -hmm. kind of like an AA meeting or a therapy meeting yeah that Emma yeah. is in charge of uh, I just love all the stuff that they have around inside uh, like on the walls the posters yeah there was a today is today poster up behind Jen that I thought was hilarious uh, that was it was like today is today Emil Blonsky and I was like but what is that? You know, yeah, make your day today, achieve everything, make your goal a reality. All motivational uh, mm -hmm. things that you know you would see something like that from somebody holds those uh, those therapy meetings, mm -hmm. which yeah, and you could tell. And he wrote a book too, if you noticed in the back. Yeah, there was, there was a, a book in the background. Yeah. So yeah. apparently, Emil, you I got out of it. It was Emil is not dangerous anymore i don't think he's a danger to anybody he wants to help he wants to do what's good so i'm seeing in the future from from emil as uh, like i stated before we could get uh, uh general ross's little group that i was talking about we could get him in there you know mm -hmm. the thunderbolts and that would be perfect and i think he would be great for a new group like that so I, I'm just loving that we get more of Emil Blonsky. I, I'm, I love it having that yeah. actor in in the show. And yeah, uh, Tim Roth is Tim Roth is just great. He's, yeah. he's amazing. He's so. such a he's such a great character actor. I, I love. There's a moment in there when they're walking when he he sees that Jen's checking her phone all the time, and he kind of he kind of jokingly says to her, "Oh, I think I heard you get a text." And she like grabs her phone. And he's like, "I'm just joking," you know? <laughs> yeah. It's like it's. <laughs> I was like, dang, dude. <laughs> like He knows that, that what's going on with her. The yeah. best reveal, though, is the guy from the Wrecking Crew comes in. He comes out of the bathroom to, mm -hmm. to the group, and he she freaks out. And she goes, hold on. And then... Uh, I, I love only, that fourth wall break. That's that's the that's been that again another redeeming moment for this episode was that yeah. was the best fourth wall break of the se of the series so far. Yeah, and well, here here's a little tidbit on this. That guy who was from the Wrecking Crew, I met in Atlanta, and guess who he was in The Walking Dead? Who was he in The Walking Dead? Remember the prisoners in the prison that they meet up, and Rick kills the guy with the machete in the oh, head. Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. him. That's him, I, yeah. I had drinks with him at the Omni up at uh, when I went for one year for Walker Stalker while I was waiting for Rima and and Jason. And I was there alone. I think Kat and whoever else was like there were on their way, Wendy and the rest of them. So I was just waiting because they were still in the, the convention. So I started talking to him and he actually told me because he was in um, Jumanji, the next oh, wow. level. 
uh, or Welcome to the Jungle, or the the second one that they did with The Rock. Yeah. He was in that one too, and he was telling me about that. That was before that came out. But he's a really pleasant dude to talk to, and he he says he he told me he goes, dude, I get work here all the time. And he goes, I've been living here all all these years. And I could just be an actor and The Walking Dead just, like, opened up the doors for me. So I'm glad nice. to see him that he's in Marvel, you know? Yeah. 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 Very cool. So that's, uh, that's great. Yeah. So that that was a pretty cool tidbit that you could see him in, in The Walking Dead, too. Uh, I just love the fact that they have to work that issue out with her and him because mm-hmm. she was so angry. She hulked out. Right? Yeah. <laughs> she, she wouldn't, yeah. And she stayed in form until they were able to regress. And how he said he was apologetic about things, how she couldn't. She was like really standoffish, but it, they kind of worked it out. Yeah. And then, then, then it kind of rolled into her relationship issues with Josh. And then the group gets involved, and I just like it. But I love the little points there too, with like Porcupine and Saracen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and like when Porcupine takes his mask off, and everybody's like, "Whoa!" The stink. Like, yeah, yeah. How long have you had that on? And, you know. So I thought it was yeah, it was great. And the guy that about the blood stuff, the guy that thought he was a vampire, was great. And, yeah. Uh, you know, we, we, the only thing we didn't see, we didn't see Emil's soulmates. So I don't know where they're at in this on this retreat. Maybe they're in a separate. I guess they're in a separate place somewhere. Those Probably. seven ladies or whatever it was. So yeah. Uh, Saracen was an interesting character to see, though. I, he got uh, the way that Emil states it. He thinks he's a vampire, but he's not. But it was like, was that kind of like a reveal or a relation to Blade in some way? In my feeling, because they're still amping up and try to, and I, they like to throw these kind of little mm-hmm. clues or Easter eggs. But yeah, know, I'm he, wondering. I'm wondering that myself. That's going to be something uh, is going to come out uh, later on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just love uh, Emil's outlook, though. Um, yeah. But uh, the the last part that I would have that I liked would be the reveal at the end with Josh taking the picture of showing that he was part of the Hulk King mm-hmm. or uh, uh, Intelligentsia. Yeah. So, yeah. The, yeah, uh, and uh, you know there was we we got some of those courtroom pics again there over the credits. I thought was great. We see Porcupine taking his he's got his mask on and he's taking his suit to the dry cleaners, and she's just kind of turning her head away. And, and <laughs> some of the other those I'm just loving watching those courtroom pics. They uh, are they're cute. There are a lot of things that they show or they add to now. Mm-hmm. Um, there there's like there's one. That I'll talk about in uh, the next episode, but they keep mm-hmm. adding to certain scenes that you get yeah. of uh, Jen in there, and they and each one is different, but it's a reveal of like what happened within the episode. But you get the standard ones that they've always had. Yeah, and exactly. I love the drawings too. Uh, the only quotes I have, I only two for this one, and says uh, that's the <laughs> the uh, pearl officer to Jen saying, "Can you put on your jolly green suit?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was good. Didn't he say something like Hulk out or something like that or whatever you call it when you do it? It's something like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. The uh, you you said you got one more. Uh, yeah, I'm hurting for a yurtin. Oh, <laughs> from Jack. Uh, the only one I've got is at the beginning when she's looking at the intelligentsia stuff and she says, "Can't even say it to my face because they know they'd get Hulk smashed." So I thought that was great. Yeah, that was a good one. I like that one. All right, I uh, guess we can move right along into uh, episode... Season 1, Episode 8, Ribbit and Rip It. <laughs> rip it, rip it. <laughs> uh, She-Hulk represents Leapfrog, who was injured due to a malfunction in his custom-made super suit. He's so. got his super suit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, this one was a little bit better. I, I really loved this one. I, I enjoyed it a lot. I, I'll, I'll probably watch it again. I only got a chance to watch it twice. I may watch it a third time just to, to catch anything that I that I might have missed before the finale airs. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, it was really good, and it's it really set up well for the finale and for where you know we could possibly see it going into a second second season. I hope. Yeah. Same here. I. I- I don't think if they do Jen have Jen come into the MCU actually a movie, it might be just as an appearance to help out on something, mm-hmm. and then that would probably be it. And then they'll probably keep this as a regular ongoing series. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, we'll see. We haven't gotten any confirmation or anything yet from Disney, um, but 
well, as we're recording this, my friend Walter's in New York City Comic Con. <laughs> oh, wow. So, so he's at the panels and stuff this weekend. So who knows what he'll uh, come back with information on. So uh, he, he said he went to the Walking Dead one and he got to meet a bunch of people. Uh, mm-hmm. Jeffrey D. Morgan didn't wear any get get his hair dyed so he was graying out so i don't know if that was something <laughs> in the uh maggie and negan show mm. but yeah but yeah i um i'm looking forward to see if anything comes out from new york city comic-con for me this episode uh, i thought i really enjoyed it it was one of my favorites in the sense that the just the comedic aspect of it of leapfrog we've been waiting for this particular episode because i remember it was like just a short clip that we got and i was like why is leapfrog in this he's a joke uh you know he was a character in the comics but he was a joke and i'm like okay well technically yeah he is a joke and you know jen has to uh actually represent him for a case against luke jacobson and she has to deal with that whole issue with luke and on top of that, the best part is getting Matt Murdock. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I've been waiting for. We've all been waiting for. They waited until next to last episode. But this is a different kind of Matt Murdock in, in con- considering what we've had before with the Netflix version. Now, mm-hmm. they're saying this is the same one, but Matt's demeanor is different in comparison to that. It's a lot lighter he has uh-huh. a little bit more personality. He's not Mr. Curmudgeon Doom and Gloom, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very much very much more laid back, not that uh not the dark and, and brooding. Not, yeah, brooding. <laughs> Thank you. That was the word that I had in my head. That's the yeah. word that I was trying to, to search for. He is not the brooding Daredevil that we had in the Netflix series. And plus he's in a different suit. He's got that gold suit now. Yeah, uh, it's which, yellow and red. That's the traditional when the first run of Daredevil came out in the comics. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and then he they did have a black suit at one point. We might there might be hints because the way Matt talks about it, he he went to Luke to get suits, so we know the reasoning why he was out there, but also Luke needed him for what uh for to the, represent him in this, represent in this him. yeah well and i don't and that's that's the thing i, I think it, it sounded like the, the interpretation i took of it was that he he came out to get the suits the suits made mm-hmm. and that's when this case came up and luke yep. says hey why don't you represent me and he's in you know so suddenly matt can now write off this or you know he can he can now make it a a, a work-related trip Mm-hmm. Uh, for taxes or whatever, you know, or so. get paid too. Luke could actually pay him. Oh, exactly. Oh, I think that's what I think that's what he meant by the us and them. Yes, kind of that's thing. what it like, was. This, yeah, this is a them. This is a them case. I'm I'm working for some guy who gets paid a bunch of money to make super suits. Yeah. you know, and and then he does the he said what he does in Hell Kitch- Hell's Kitchen is pro bono, and when they get mm-hmm. overrun with bills and everything, he has to do this. So it's an us on the pro bono work, and it's a them for the work that he gets paid for. So mm-hmm. it's really for him to make the money so he could help out those people in Hell's Kitchen. Right, right. Uh, my question, though, is now he's got a license to practice law in New York. Does that work out in California? So Penny yeah, would know. I mean, yeah, depending on – I know <laughs> my cousin Vinny is probably not the best. Uh, I mean, actually, my cousin Vinny, from what I understand, was is really good in actually the courtroom stuff that they did but yeah it, it was you know you remember when he meets with the judge he said it's just a formality for the judge to approve an out-of-state lawyer ah okay so he said it's just a formality but you got to learn this procedure thing so so uh, i think that was the, the 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 case of it is you just gotta get the approval of the judge okay yeah you, you're licensed in another state but that's fine Oh, that's pretty. It's cool. not like practicing medicine, where you, you know, yeah, well, yeah, states, well, yeah, where you've got to be, you've got to be, you know, actually licensed or or whatever in in different states and stuff. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, I love, I, I love that. Uh, I love the leapfrog thing of it. The and you know the 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 rich kid turning out to be the bad guy was very kick ass. Yeah, uh, it reminded me of, of that. Um, but, and you know, it's one of those things that this this episode you mentioned it kind of at the beginning. Um, we got a mixture. We got everything really that we've had in in this in this one episode. We got everything from the story. We got the comedy. We got mm-hmm. courtroom. We got uh, action, superhero action. Uh, yeah. We got the cameo. Uh, so we got everything that we've expected except for a tag. But I think I really think like we talked about last last time. I think when they reordered these episodes, I think they just didn't realize that they had all the ones with tags all in a row. 
and Very true. Setting, us, setting us up to, to think there were, that I think originally they probably had them kind of interspersed throughout the 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 season and then they reordered the episodes but that's okay mm. it's it's all good it's um, all good yeah yeah and to I, talk I loved- about that though let's talk about that uh I looked online. Somebody actually went through the like WandaVision, Miss Marvel, uh, Falcon and a Winter Soldier, all the Disney Plus stuff that has had uh, mm-hmm. like end credit scenes. Mm-hmm. This has the most. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like WandaVision didn't start until they got into the modern age kind of thing. So I think they only had like two. Or, it only had like two or three. It was only two. Only two, okay. Yeah, um, yeah, and then I'm not sure. Did Falcon and the Winter Soldier did yeah, only they have had one. Two. They had two also. Okay, okay. Yeah, and Miss Marvel had two or three. Okay, and then yeah, they uh, somebody went through the whole thing. It's online. You could check it out. I think right. it was under Screen Rant that they actually yeah. went through it and checked them all. Yeah, and, and like I said, I think I think it was just a mistake to run all four of them in a row. Yeah, because it made, made everybody expect it. At that right. point, right. but honestly, it's it's expected to either at the end of the show or like the series for the last two for the fact that it's coming to an end, like an MCU movie where we stay yeah, after. Yeah, I the imagine credits. I imagine we'll get one in for nine. We'll get something for nine. We have to. Uh, we have to. You know, so uh, whether it's whether it's we're going to get to see Bruce again or what, it'll be it'll be something in nine. I'm sure. I would love to see Bruce again. It's been so long. Um, yeah. <laughs> but that courtroom scene, you know, it was one of those things that I, I, when I watched it the second time, I really started thinking about it and, and thinking, well, Jen really should have asked more questions. Of, mm-hmm. But again, I think that's part of what they're setting up with her for the end of the episode with her anger issues, because as soon as Luke like rejects her, she just kind of storms out and says, well, I'm going to kick you. I'm going to get you in court, you know, mm-hmm. and, and then so then she didn't do her due diligence of asking questions of the client. Mm-hmm. You know, did you use the the suit correctly? Did you follow the instructions? Because, you know, she might have she might have gotten this taken care of without having to go to court, not having a losing record. And that's what she a, was a trying loss. to do when she went to Luke. Right. Originally, right. which makes more sense because she doesn't want to ruin that relationship. Well, mm-hmm. it got ruined anyway. Right, uh, right. I just love how Matt was able to sniff out and he goes, what kind mm-hmm. of fuel do you use in your suit? Yeah. And he goes, jet fuel. And then that's when Luke just turns around. That wasn't set for jet fuel. Yeah. And and just basically blatantly ignoring the instructions that were in there. And that's how it gets dismissed. Right. So I thought it was pretty cool in that sense. Yeah. But what we, what we get afterwards, the relationship with Jen and Matt, I really enjoyed that. It, the where yeah. it was going, and she kind of breaks the fourth wall. This had a lot of fourth wall breaks in it too. By the it way, it did. I caught. I, I caught that she does it. She does do it, what you mentioned last week that I didn't catch in in those episodes. She does do a camera spike a couple times. And yeah. She just she just turns her head and eyes the. And I and gives us the eyes and then turns back to the thing and I'm like okay those are fourth wall breaks we'll have to we'll have to yeah. give those up but uh, I think it was yeah, like four or five totally they, including those but there was there was a few I love I love that that whole relationship that they started out you know calling her you know she calls him an a hole when he comes into the yeah. uh, the <laughs> the the courtroom there and then when they meet up at the bar you know <laughs> she's she they're kind of having this playful banter and again like you said you had that fourth wall break where she's like okay you're sensing this too right you're seeing this here right i'm not just <laughs> um but then another another great that great one at the end of the episode when she walks out and she's like why are you still here <laughs> just yeah. like because the, i wanted to go and i almost answered her because the show's still going <laughs> You know, but I'm like, it's, oh, wait, it's an interactive experience yeah, now. It's, it's, yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, it was that, that was great, and, and just the, the whole that whole scene with Nikki again was was just wonderful. Oh yeah, I, I just love how Matt when he's at the bar buys her an apple teeny and it's green. Yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. And she's and she's drinking it, and uh, yeah, I love it. At first, she's kind of like, mm, and then she, but she does go ahead and drink it, but. Uh, yeah, I, I loved I loved their fight, their attack on the warehouse. Their their banter was really great. I don't know if those two characters interacted in the comic books at all, but I don't recall really seeing them interacting all that much. <laughs> but these these two, at least in this episode, had great like chemistry. Like, yeah, really, really good. So I hope I hope that that's one of the things we get to see more of. 
I hope it's not just a one night stand kind of thing, even though yeah. he was doing the walk of shame, even holding his <laughs> shoes, like carrying his <laughs> shoes. Cause I thought about that. Cause it reminded me of that episode from in the, uh, that episode, that movie in the line of fire with yeah. Eddie Stewart and Rene Russo, where he's like, Oh, I got to put all that stuff back on, you know? <laughs> and like, so daredevil in the morning had to put all that stuff back on so that he could walk home. I'm like, she didn't even call him an Uber or anything. Like, yeah, he's like so, he just walks out, and Nikki notices it too. And yeah, she's, she's like, yeah, some devil guy wearing a devil costume is walk, walking, doing a walk of shame. And then she looks, and she's like, "Oh, great, good for you." <laughs> yeah, I love Jen's got this big smile on her face. That yeah, that was that was the whole thing. Was that whole thing was really really great. I love that fight, their attack on the the warehouse. Oh, the way, yeah, the way he's like explaining what he's going to do, and she's like, "That's going to take like a half an hour." Per guy. <laughs> and, he's, and, and he's like, no, I don't think you're doing the math right on that. <laughs> so. Well, also, uh, there was a couple of nods to that. Uh, like, there, when she first encounters him, they're up in the garage. She kind of does a lot of damage. I mentioned this before. Every time she's, like, involved in something like that, she's causing mm -hmm. more damage. Oh, yeah. And he points that out, and it's just like, you're not doing the math right. You're <laughs> having issues. You're you're creating more, especially at the very end when she's ready to toss the car at him. Yeah. I, she's, I'm like, you're blatantly destroying somebody else's property. It's like, it's like, especially when she, like, punches the ground and it splits on the top and you're at the top level of this garage. Cars mm -hmm. can fall in and fall down and break, and then you're destroying the whole garage. Tony yeah. Stark's not there to protect you and pay for that. What mm -hmm. if, like, the the city of California or Los Angeles, to, uh, like, goes after her legally because they're, they're like, yeah, we know you're a lawyer. You do work for this firm, so we can <laughs> sue you for damages that you've done. <laughs> I yeah. wonder if that'll come out because, you know, obviously this the, the episode left off where she's... You know, she's just she, destroyed this hotel, this uh, hotel yeah. ballroom or whatever. Yeah, it was. and she yeah. rages, and then they have all these uh, like shield style agents with their guns ready to stop her, mm -hmm. to prevent her. And that's when you, she has that look, and she's still growling, just like a Hulk. Yeah. Uh, but they they both had that uh, the the encounter with her and Matt though when they're fighting out outside the parking garage, and she does the clap. Mm -hmm. That was a good scene in the sense that it just does something from he his hearing. But right. she he, like very much turns back to regular Jen very quickly after she yeah. realizes it's Matt. And then I just love the banter within it. The 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 quotes in there are funny that I have. Nice, good because I don't have any quotes from this one, so you'll 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 be good on that that whole section. Yeah, um, I I just loved it for the fact that it's like, of course, you know, after both sessions. But the like you said with the uh, both scenes of the action, the the one at the lily pad. Come on, she he <laughs> goes. I'm just gonna meet you at the lily pad. It's my secret uh, lair. Uh, yeah. Everybody knows. What, it's like yeah, yeah. Well, everybody knows where it is. It's kind of pointed out, and you know, <laughs> it's my secret lair that everybody knows Neon about. Light. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And then the guys in there, his henchmen. And I, I have the quote on that too, but you know, it's like they they have this like Matt and Jen have this thing about henchmen and goons. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> that was all well, goons are this and henchmen are that. Yeah, I have the quote exactly. Okay. Is. Yeah, but um, it's funny. But the uh, then did you, did you notice though in his uh, lily pad or whatever it is, everything is branded for him. Like yeah, he had like a frogger had, mm -hmm. machine, but he had everything else. Everything was set up almost like a frog. But you know, even Luke, who is there, who he kidnapped, that that was the funniest. It's like it's like he even says, "It's like whoever told you that you, you could get away with this color, you should go back and shoot them." <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. I love I love their their whole conversation on the roof there when he's walking when she says, Who's the superpowered one? And she's pointing at herself and she goes, I'm pointing at myself. And he goes, Yeah, I I, I know. Remember I have echolocation and he like does air quotes for his echolocation. Well, like, you know, oh yeah, because it's she's... not really because she, she like he tells her it's echolocation, but really it's he does have superpowers. Yes, right? he does. Technically in the comics his uh, all senses are super enhanced from the this radiated liquid that right. caused him to that, be blind. I think that was the same thing in the Netflix show, right? That there yes. there was some kind of a radiation thing. But yeah, he did get. I mean, he did get that training from Stick. He yeah, got, he did get all that extra all that extra training as well. But 
he does have some, but he doesn't reveal kind of reveal that to her. So I don't know uh, what that's about, but it's not a big deal. Yeah, and the, the there's a few uh, stabs in this, like the the goons in there. He calls them tadpoles. Mm-hmm. Eugene calls them tadpoles. Uh, right. He's telling them. Uh, he tries to convince the crew that we should just call you guys the Leap Squad. Right. <laughs> and then he's trying to tell Luke, as Luke like, got the sewing machine and everything, trying to work on something, he's trying to get ideas for the suit. And he goes, you know, uh, let's, we should have it make it bulletproof shields. Uh, yeah, and have a British accent. A fancy a, AI, yeah. yeah. I'm like, he's basically asking for, for an Iron Man suit. He's basically like, yeah. and, and Luke is like, I don't do that kind of. So, yeah. yeah, like poison you know. darts, like tree frogs, and yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know the flirting and everything else between yeah. that and and Jen. I just that was one thing that I really loved. Something I did not see coming, but and the whole relation that they had, and then yeah. him promising her that they could go on a date out to mm-hmm. dinner at when he comes back. She thinks, and that's why she gives that like you you said that that look to the camera. <laughs> and then the next, and the next thing we know, they're at the, the bedroom. Therapy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, there was something. Let's. I want to go back to something real quick before sure. we before I forget about it. It's in my notes, but I want to go back to it because it, it's early on in the episode in the courtroom scene uh, that Matt Murdock makes a statement that I think is really important. Mm-hmm. Unless I missed something in the MCU, he Good. says he says the Sokovia Accords have been repealed. Yes. And so, when did that happen? Is that that's is that, not? So, I was going to bring that up too. That was yeah. I, I, that I was, is now canon. That is, it now, is canon. now canon. They probably did that purposely because now they have a reason to have all these new these characters coming mm-hmm. out. Right, have these secret identities and having these new these new superheroes and stuff. And why it have. might have to be related to mutants too. Yeah. And on top of that, how, uh, like, I love how when Matt and Jen are in the bar, he literally just gave himself up because he said Luke is there to make him a couple of suits. She didn't put that two and two together. Yeah, uh, she didn't put it together that he was, because she she thought he meant suit suits, like yes. like the suit he's wearing, because she makes some comment about what he's wearing. And he's like, oh, I am wearing pants, right? So I don't think she picked up on the fact that this guy makes super suits and this guy just told, but she, I mean, but then she gets, it, she finds out that he's Daredevil anyway. Yeah. By the, you know, middle of the episode. So she knows that she knows that he's a hero. So yeah. she didn't really, but you're right. She should have put it together right there at the bar that he was some sort of hero or superhero at least. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's one of those. It, yeah. It's just an, it's another example of something that they've done in this show that is, is for the broader universe. Mm-hmm. That is just making sure this show is being cemented as definitely in this universe and 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 has brought like like Moon Knight, Moon Knight you could almost treat as like a standalone that there wasn't really anything mm-hmm. in there that really affected the rest of the Marvel universe. You know Falcon uh, or kept, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We do have the the what was her name the broker, uh, yeah. The at, at the end there being established. We have that. The, we have the the countess, her character being being so that, that had that had effects on the wider universe. Uh, Hawkeye had the introduction of Kingpin, so that's to the bigger universe, and and so these these shows are really making a mark to make sure Kevin Feige is making sure we know that these these shows are canon and they are part of the yeah. larger. It, it's more of the continuity for the MCU mm-hmm. people that we could see in the movies as well within the shows itself. Literally, it's giving job security for a lot of actors right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the and I, I'm just glad uh, they actually stated that. I think that was the first time within all the movies and the shows that they talk about the Sokovia Accords and mm-hmm. being repealed. So to me, I think it's part of the new phases that we're going to get. So with five and six, that they're going to, that way, when they do introduce these new people, we could figure out. Deadpool, the, the mutants, uh, like for X Men, you know, if we get Wolverine, uh, we'll talk about that in with the news too. But there are so much things that are that are so many things that are be coming out that we do need these some of these superheroes to be that have that anonymity that nobody knows who they are. Unlike you know the Fantastic Four, 
which we'll eventually get, but that that family is already known in the world as to, to who they are. Mm -hmm. uh, Jennifer Walters as She-Hulk is always known who she is. Uh, Frank Castle as uh, Punisher, everybody knows who he was because it was in the uh, the news. Right. And and uh, with Daredevil, well, Matt was never known. Nobody knew who it was, even though in the Netflix show they were trying to expose him for being Daredevil. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I don't know if they're going to make that canon or if Feige's going to come out saying, yes, reference to the Daredevil shows. Because I already mentioned it last, uh, when we recorded last, with the last episode of Panels to Pixels, where uh, we're getting uh, Eldon back as Foggy Nelson. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm hoping we get the whole crew back with uh, with everybody from Daredevil. That would be yeah. so that would be so great. Um, um, let's talk about let's talk about the gala for a minute. <laughs> um, I, I you know I, I love like you said we already talked a little bit about the fourth wall break and, and the, the, the she says why are you still here and well why are we doing a gala sort of twist. That's gonna that's gonna happen. So I, I I love that. But you know the 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 idea of all the female reporters in the room are the female or reporters lawyers. lawyers all yeah. the female lawyers are the female lawyer of the year. Was like oh come on that it's was just, that was just wrong. And that's yeah. And, and it's literally showing you how the world treats a lot of women. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it does. It's like we'll just group them all. Everybody's. Yeah. It's like really that sucks. That's that's like that's terrible. Yeah. Mallory had the best answer of, oh, and we, we hate getting asked what it's like to be a woman and a lawyer. Yep. So I love that. Um, the, the, the film, the Intelligentsia showed, mm -hmm. revealed quite a bit. And I thought there was a, an interesting line. I did catch it in the first, in the first watch, and I made sure that to, to, the second watch they did. They think she stole Bruce's powers. Yes. And the only reason I can think they would think that is because Bruce has been gone for so long. And so they don't know... You know, they don't know that he still has his powers. Uh, yeah, but I, it's also, I, I think this is being run by somebody that we haven't seen oh, yet. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's absolutely like fake news. They're trying to, to, to fake, fake it out and stuff. But it's just, I, I also it just like that. Interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. I, I like the fact too, when they do that and they have all this stuff flashing up from her phone and all the information that was taken by Josh, mm -hmm. uh, there was pictures of Captain America in there. I'm curious. Oh, I didn't catch that. Okay. I was wondering what that was about. And maybe like, she really did go try out for the Avengers. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. But well, that I, was I was like, yeah, but you know, Cap is gone. <laughs> this is right. after uh, Endgame. Right. Uh, but yeah, the uh the whole reveal, her hulking out, uh raging she, out. Right. And I think if she could have stayed calm, she probably could have turned it around. Especially once they called her a slut, that definitely she could have she could have turned that around on them. Mm -hmm. But her hulking out, that becomes the fixation of the thing is that oh she just she just raged, you know? Yeah, yeah, and that was true to fashion of the original uh, Savage She Hulk in the very mm -hmm. beginning when they created the She Hulk for the comics. Now before the gala, when Nikki was there to help her out, mm -hmm. I don't know if you caught it, but she had the. Uh, the makeup stuff, like the wands in her fingers and snicked out like Wolverine. So that oh. was a cool reference to uh, Wolverine right there. She okay. did a little. It was kind of blatant. <laughs> it's like, Maybe. let's get her made up. Okay. And then uh, there was a mention by uh, Jen as she was breaking the fourth wall going, uh, oh, well, I wonder. It's like this. Oh, wait. The next episode's the last episode. But this is the gala. Uh, right. well, you would think it would be the gala. But he goes, well, wonder what is going to be, happen next. Maybe, will they reveal like a Red Hulk? And then it's like, <laughs> oh, that would be cool, but I doubt it. It's not going to be a Red Hulk, I don't think. I think it's going to be somebody with like gamma mutation, but that's just my my uh, my hunch on, like, remember we already spoke about the Incredible Hulk, how they already brought Emil Blonsky as the Abomination, mm -hmm. but they alluded at the very end of that, that one actor, I'm forgetting his name, but he, uh, he got turned into the leader. So right. this could be him. And then he created these, these crews or like this intelligentsia to infiltrate, to get something more from Jen, like her blood or anything to do, because 
that was what the leader did. He literally just was trying to get more and more people exposed to gamma mutations so he can control the world. Gotcha. So I, I'm curious if that happens. Uh, I'm just like more interested to see who is it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. And how is she going to get out of this if she if she's able to get out of it or what she where she what where is she going to be in the next episode? Is she going to be in jail? Is she going to be? Yeah, well, that's that's a good know, question. Like you said, are they going to be suing her or what's what's going on? So yeah. Yeah. Um, How do you restrain a She-Hulk? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, that's all I had for for points. I have one little note that we haven't talked about yet that I'll I'll bring up uh, unless you've got other things to. Oh, uh, the only thing I have is um, quotes. Okay. That's about it. Uh, okay. I could go through those if you want. No, uh, let me get my my last my only last note that we haven't talked about before is sure. uh, uh, both Daredevil and She-Hulk got to do a superhero landing. Yes, we didn't did. really we didn't really see hers. Hers was more kind of just a flat footed uh, land, but mm -hmm. he did the whole you know knees up uh, superhero landing, which I thought was was cool. We haven't seen that uh, uh, in, in a bit, so it was it was nice to see that in this in this show. <laughs> uh, that's okay. all I got. If you got quotes, it's no. on to you. Yeah, that's all I got. Uh, it's funny too when you talk about that. I all I could hear is Black Widow's sister going, "What do you do the hair flip yeah. with yeah. your hair when you do this? You do a pose." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the well for quotes, I have Matt in the very beginning when he uh, comes into the courtroom. And he goes, "Apologies for the tardiness, Your Honor. I had a hard time parking. Just kidding. My driver got a little lost." <laughs> Yeah, I thought that was cute. Just play off his him being blind. Um, one from Jen going to uh, this is to Matt when she realizes it. She goes, "Are you like the Gold Devil, a superhero?" <laughs> and then he starts trying to correct her, and uh, he goes, "No, I'm Daredevil." And she just looks at him like blankly, like, "What is that?" Because that's yeah. all the way out in New York, and nobody knows anything in California about him. Mm -hmm. And she goes, "Well." Uh, she goes. Then she goes. Well, it's really very daring you to, for you to use ketchup and mustard as your color scheme. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and she then he makes the remark about telling Luke that, and then she shuts up like, oh no, mm -hmm. no, because she knows that you know Luke Jacobson is her thing. Uh, here's the one with the the b difference between goons by Matt. So he goes, goons and henchmen are completely different animals. Henchmen believe in the cause. Goons are just there for the paycheck. Um. Oh yeah, and then she actually states she Hulk smash when she drops in uh, to help Matt in the hallway with the goons. Yeah, uh, and then uh, that was about it. Uh, that's literally all the uh, stuff that I got as far as quotes. All right. So you said you've got some uh, news. Well, with news, well, obviously Werewolf by Night dropped. So we highly encourage you guys to to watch it. It's very entertaining. It's only fifty four minutes, and it's uh, a holiday special. And it's if you look in the very beginning, it's introduced as like a like those typical holiday specials you used to get as a kid on mm -hmm. primetime TV, and you look for it every season. Uh, it is black and white for the most part in the very most of the movie or or episode. I like to call it. Uh, check that out. Um, we got. Ryan Reynolds dropping what's going to happen for Deadpool 3. And that we're getting Hugh Jackman back as uh, Wolverine for yeah, that. Yeah, do you do you think that's real or do you think this is this is cuz the movie's not coming out till September 2024. So I you, think it is real. Okay. Okay. It, I just I just really thought this is going to be this is going to turn out to be nothing that it's it's not real, but it, it could be, I guess. Well, I I think well Ryan Reynolds, I, I, I keep up with this because I look at the certain like interviews and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, he had stated in an interview the reason why he tried to get Jackman in is because he goes, I went and Disney slash Marvel was concerned. It's like, all right, well, this is a rated R Marvel film. Yes, the first two did great, but they weren't Marvel you know, related. They, they were from... Uh, what was it, Warner Brothers or Fox? It was Fox. Yeah, Fox. So basically, uh, you know, it was that company's way of doing it, and they could get away with rated R. So he was concerned about, I want, he goes, I want an end game level type of movie to bring in the audience. So he, he said, I went to Hugh, and, you know, Hugh loved what they were doing with Marvel and always had a, like, an eye. So he, 
he goes, I approached him and I asked him and then we came up with a gimmick of doing this. And then there were pick, uh, you could see Hugh Jackman on his Twitter. He actually is working out, which is amazing. And I'm like, okay, so he's starting. It's a long haul to get to it, but they also have to get to the filming of it. Right now, it's just all pre-production. But Reynolds has been pushing this for a long time. Okay, I just, uh, you know, because the, the the first Deadpool movie established Hugh Jackman as a an actor in there that the like it almost established that the X Men movies mm -hmm. were part of that Deadpool universe. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't know. It, 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 it'll be fun. It'll be fun to see if if he's actually in it. If he's in it and how they how they work him in and, and what they do with it. So it's it's gonna be cool. I'm, I'm, yeah. It's gonna be great no matter what it is. It's it's Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman. It is. So. Yeah, it is. It definitely is. And I look forward to it. Um, that's all I had really when it came to news. Uh, if, like I said, listeners will probably do the uh, Werewolf One Night towards the end of October. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. And uh, that's about it for news and information. Obviously, no feedback, but uh, we I think you have some podcast recommendations. I, I don't this week, really. Uh, I've just been listening to, oh, yeah, Smartless. I guess I have been listening to more Smartless. I just I just listened to the Ethan Hawke. Uh, it, it, what I do with Smartless is I download all of them to my phone, but then uh. I pick and choose which <laughs> ones I actually listen to. And I just listened to the Ethan Hawke one, which was really fascinating to hear him and Jason Bateman because they're all, all three of them, Will Arnett, Jason Bateman, uh, Sean Hayes, and, and Ethan Hawke, they're all right around the same age. They're our age, 50, between mm -hmm. 50 and 50 something. And yeah. uh, um, so they, they, they talked about, you know, how early on, what Ethan did, he talked a little bit about uh, Maya, uh, who, which is his daughter with Uma Thurman, who's in Stranger Things, and so it's a really good. Uh, the Ethan Hawke one is really, really good. Cool to just to hear him talk about acting and and uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, the only one I would ha like uh, to recommend would be the Truest Blood podcast came out again for its second season, so they're covering season two of True Blood, so you can check that out. Nice. Uh, well, we we can be heard on Spotify, uh, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player you choose to use. If there's an opportunity to give us a review, we would love to to get that, and we would give you a shout out here on the show. You can check out our website, panels to pixels podcast dot com. We're on Facebook at facebook dot com slash panels to pixels. We're on Twitter at panels to pixels, and that's panels and the number two pixels. We have an email address, which is panels2pixels1 at gmail.com. That's panels2pixels. The T-O is spelled out right there in the middle in, with letters, the number one at gmail.com. You can find us on YouTube if you search Panels to Pixels podcast. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up. And actually, we did get some feedback. My oh, friend nice. Jared, who is in, I think he's in... North Carolina now. He's living there, but he's retired. But he threw it. It's not any panels to pixels related or anything. It's just between him and I and our low fire main up the irons. Is what he says. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's nice. Uh, we are on Instagram at panels to pixels podcast. That's all spelled out in words. Panels to pixels podcast on Instagram. Uh, and we love for you to check out all the other podcasts on the Next Level Podcast Network. We highly recommend them all. Wilhelm. Uh, look forward to uh, both Steve and I going to be covering community with Ben, with uh, Wilhelm. So uh, we're going to give our top fives of uh, the TV show community now that uh, it's been greenlit and it's a go for a community movie because they kept saying six seasons and a movie. So yep. now it's coming true. Very cool. The so, Melting Pat, Podcast Zero, and so much more. Just go to nextlevelradioonline.com. Very cool. Coming up for us, uh, you can hear more from uh, uh, the Umbrella Academy. And next week, the hopefully season, not series, finale of yeah. She-Hulk uh, next week. And where else can listeners hear us? Well, I say it every week. I send... Uh, <laughs> voicemails to various other podcasts that our friends do and they are are gracious enough to to play them on there uh particularly i've been uh pretty faithful to uh cast of the ring which is a podcastica uh, podcast and of course cobra kai cast which just wrapped up uh last week with uh, their coverage of cobra kai season 
five. Season five. Yep. Um, <laughs> uh, last week, and that's Cobra Kai cast and cast of the ring. Yeah, I was enjoying uh, Cobra Kai cast. I, I haven't been able to keep up with a lot of podcasts, but I had that on uh, my phone listening to it while I was looking for cars. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but uh, where else can you listeners hear me? Well, obviously you could hear me here on Panels of the Pixels podcast, but you'd also hear me on Adrenaline Cinema podcast, which could be found on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network, where we cover fantasy, action, thriller, suspense, all those movies that make your adrenaline going. Uh, the most recent episode that we have up was Omega Man. I'm currently in the works of uh, going to record with our friend Kelly on the movie Speed. Steve and I still have to work on recording for uh, Prey yep. and get that out of the way. And then Jerry and I will be covering the Valley of Guanji. And then for Halloween... Uh, I'm trying to get a twofer. I'm trying to get Tom Savini on the FX guru or <laughs> Godfather of uh, Splatter uh, to be on for an interview. And uh, our friend Jamie, who I cover, and this is a dual thing, Sandman cast on the Podcastica Network. So you could hear me there as well. Uh, we're coming up on the last couple of episodes of Sandman cast. But you could hear Jamie and I on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast for Halloween. So I'm trying to get that up. So we're covering... The uh, Jason X movie from the Friday the 13th series. <laughs> so you could check that out there. You could also hear me on uh, Fantasy Picks Movie Edition as well. Uh, I'm looking, they're looking for me to do uh, a Halloween one as well, but uh, we got to make that work. But you can check me out on all those, all those other platforms. You know where to find them. Just go search in your podcast app or player of choice. Very nice. And that pretty much wraps it up for this particular episode of Panels to Pixels podcast. All I like to say is same podcast, different panel, different pixel. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.